Let's continue by looking at the respiratory membrane. Now, the respiratory membrane is what separates the air in the lungs from the blood in the pulmonary capillaries. So let's see what makes up this membrane. Now, first, let's look at the wall of the alveoli. Primarily, what you see there are two cell types, type 1 and type 2 pneumocytes, but just a few of these others you see down there at the end. Now, type 1 pneumocytes are just simple squamous cells, one flat layer of epithelial cells. That's as thin as it gets in the human body. In any place where you want the movement of material, which we do here, oxygen and carbon dioxide, a thin layer is what you need. So a simple squamous layer there. This is what makes up almost all the wall of the alveoli, about 90% of it. And here's where most of your gas exchange occurs. But scattered in between those type 1, right? Pneumocyte just means lung cell. Scattered in between the type 1 are some type 2, some simple cuboidal epithelial cells. These are there to produce surfactant. Surfactant is a material, a chemical that will decrease the attraction of water molecules. Water molecules are like little magnets. They like to come together. Well, you need to decrease that attraction of them. You didn't have this surfactant that all come together every time you exhale, all these water molecules would, and it'd be very difficult to inflate your lungs. Be almost like somebody punched you in the stomach, knocked the wind out of you every time you exhaled if you didn't have this surfactant. And in between those, there's also a little scattering of macrophages doing cleanup work. You can look at layers of the respiratory membrane a little bit closer. Now, there'll be a very thin layer of fluid inside the alveoli. And you're going to have your simple squamous layer that makes up the wall of the alveoli to type 1 pneumocytes. A little basement membrane, which most epithelial tissues have little bit of a tiny space, and then your basement membrane and simple squamous layer of the capillary. So again, you look at the wall of that alveoli and the wall of that capillary, those are simple squamous layers. So two simple squamous epithelial layers are pretty much all that separate the air that you breathe in and the blood in those pulmonary capillaries. And also around the wall of that alveoli, you have all those elastic fibers. <clears throat> Think of them like little rubber bands. Every time you draw air into the lungs, you stretch them, you relax that diaphragm muscle, and those fibers will recoil and greatly help to get the air out. Look at your two lungs and look at the anatomy of them. First of all, they're sort of triangle shaped. They've got a broad base and come up to somewhat of a point. So the broad base on the bottom is what you'd see inferior closest to the diaphragm. The pointy top would be the apex. And then the hilum is the region medial to the inside of each one of your lungs where things are going in and out of them. You're really looking at bronchia and blood vessels going in and out of the lungs here. You look at all these structures collectively, and that's what's called the hilum, also called the root of the lung. And when you look at your two lungs, they're not the same. Because your heart is more to the left side of the thoracic cavity, your right lung is larger with three lobes, and the left lung smaller with two. And those lobes have tiny little depressions in between them called fissures. But look at all these different divisions. Again, you look inside your lungs, they're lobes. They look almost like lungs inside of lungs. This is what's supplied air by the secondary bronchi. A lung is supplied by a primary. A lobe is supplied by a secondary. And then next, the bronchopulmonary segments, which are inside the lobes, those are supplied by tertiary bronchi, the third branches coming down off the trachea. So looking at your two lungs again, right one is the larger of the two. It has three lobes and ten bronchopulmonary segments inside of it. Left lung is smaller. It has two lobes and nine bronchopulmonary segments in it. But let's also look at the muscles of ventilation. Talk about the muscles that move air in and out of your lungs. There are two different groups a group involved with getting the air in and another with getting the air out. Now let's look first at the muscles involved with inspiration. You want to get air in, you got to contract that diaphragm muscle. Again, the lungs rest right on top of this muscle. This muscle is somewhat dome-shaped whenever it's relaxed. You tell it to contract, it's going to go down in an inferior position here. Now when it goes down, you'll see later on, this is going to make the thoracic cavity larger. That's going to drop the pressure on the inside, and in the air is going to come towards lower pressure. We'll see that with Boyle's Law further along in our videos. 
Now, when you're sitting and relaxing, this diaphragm muscle right here is generally all you need to move enough air to get adequate gas exchange. But if you're breathing a little bit faster, like when you're running, you can also use these other muscles like the internal intercostals, which are in between your ribs, the pectoralis minor and the scalenes, because all these will elevate your ribs. So what happens when you take a deep breath? You can see that your thoracic cavity, the ribs swing up and out. That also makes the thoracic cavity larger. <clears throat> At the same time, that diaphragm goes down and makes it larger. So again, rested breathing, diaphragm's all you need. During labored breathing, you can use all of these. Now you want to get the air out. But when you're rested, not breathing very much, you don't really need any muscles to get the air out. You relax that diaphragm muscle, those elastic fibers around the alveoli will recoil. And that'll help to get the air out. There's always a thin layer of water inside the alveoli. Those water molecules will be attracted like magnets, and also, that'll also help to get the air out. But during labored breathing, you got some other muscles which can assist. The rectus abdominis, your old abdominal muscles are very good for getting air out of the lungs. You tell them to contract, and they'll push in on these internal organs and up on that diaphragm muscle, and out the air will come. You can also use the internal intercostals to pull down on your ribs. It'll also help to force the air out. But looking back at this pleural cavity, remember there's one around each one of the lungs. So you got two of them right here. You always got two membranes, visceral and parietal, with serous fluid in between. You can call it pleural fluid when you're in the pleural cavity. But look at these two membranes, inner visceral, outer parietal. The inner layer is always going to be the surface of an organ. So if you're looking at the surface of a lung, that is the inner visceral layer. Not much there besides some epithelial tissue. But then the inside, the inner wall of your thoracic cavity, which is outside that lung, would be the outer parietal layer. And as always, you've got the very slippery serous fluid in between those two layers. Always reduces friction and helps to hold the organs in place. And again, if you look at this in another example, <clears throat> think about if you got two pieces of glass and they're dry, you can pull them apart easily, but you put a little water in between them and you can't. Again, it helps to hold the organs in place. Also, if you got two pieces of glass and there's nothing in between them, you push one over the other, they may scratch and get damaged. But you put a little water in between them and they roll real easy. Definitely reduces friction. And the mediastinum is a region in between the lungs. Heart and other things are found in that area there. And there's our pictures from before in the study guides also.